one of the historical underpinnings of the era in which you played PEDs. Right. And you talk about it in your book, what you saw, what you suspected, and what you might have been tempted by. Talk about that. Well, I was tempted, especially when some of your contemporaries, you know, you suspect of doing it. Um, later on, came out that they did. Um, it, it's hard to sit there and watch. Did it make you angry? I can't say angry. It's hard to sit there and watch them be perennial all-stars and, and perennial MVP candidates and have better numbers than you. Um, but at the end of the day, my relationship with my mother and father is, is the reason why I didn't. Um, because I couldn't imagine having that conversation with them about taking a shortcut or cheating um, when we had worked our whole lives to, to do things the right way and play the game the right way. So that ultimately was the reason why I kept that at arm's length. What do you find so relaxing and entrancing about bow hunting, which you did <laughs> the morning of a World Series game? Well, it's, it's, it's where I recharge my batteries. It's where I get most of my thinking done. You know, a, a lot of my important decisions are 20 foot up a tree, you know, mm. and, and the actual harvesting of an animal is secondary. Um, it, it, I have a lot of fun doing my TV show. Uh, on the Sportsman Channel that we, you know, we start taping in December or September and we're not done until the end of January. But it's, it's therapeutic for me. Uh, at the end of the season, after playing 190 or 200 games during the course of the season, it's good to be able to turn the cell phones off and turn the TVs off and just climb a tree and, and kind of recharge the batteries. I got a confession. I'm a lifelong Mets fan. Respect the hell out of me. I apologize. You tore out my heart so many times. How and why? Well, you know why, because you're a heck of a ball player you're, and, and, and the skills, but how was that team the one right in your cross here more than any other? The New York Mets were the closest thing I ever had to a rivalry. Such good teams. Uh, when you think about some of the per mm. people they had on those teams, Piazza, Ventura, Olrude, even Ricky Henderson for a while, uh, they were the the team that was the biggest threat to us winning the National League East. So, yeah, it was a little different when we rode into New York. Uh, we knew that we had to keep them in our rearview mirror as, as long as we could. We had a pretty good streak of division championships going, uh, and we wanted to keep it going. Uh, the New York Mets were the biggest threat to that and ultimately ended up, you know, uh, uh, ending the streak. Um, but. You, I lo you killed this. I, I love, Chip, you I love killed going this in man. the Shea Stadium. It was just <laughs> one of those stadiums. Great hitter's background. Um, saw the ball really yeah. good. Didn't matter who was on the mound. And, and unfortunately, we, I got the nickname Larry. It's funny. <laughs> I have a nickname. My real name is Larry, but my nickname is Larry in New York. You can still hear it now. Yeah. Yeah. One of the few people that they love Shea, that old drafty <laughs> ballpark on Flushing Bay. I talked to you about a game at Shea. You went two for four. You scored a run, but nobody remembers that. September 21st. 2001, first event in New York after 9-11. What was that like? I still get, I get chill bumps, yeah. you know, just thinking about it. The, uh, the 21 gun salute, uh, playing left field. I still have cartridges, spent cartridges from the 21 gun salute from out in left wow. field. I still have them. I've given them away as just uh, priceless mementos of people that I, that I care about and whatnot. But, um, you know, obviously, all the hatred toward the Braves and myself, it all went away. You know, uh, that night I can remember seeing a thousand yard stares in, in people's eyes. Um, they were hurt, you know, there was a, it, was a, it was a town, a city that was hurting. And I think it was our duty to go out there and provide some entertainment, you know, uh, three hours for people to take their minds off of what had just mm -hmm. taken place in, in, in New York City. Playing left field, and I had a premonition. Um, the eighth inning, Carse was, Steve Carse was on the mound, and Mike Piazza was walking up, and uh, I had a premonition. I said, he's going to hit a home run right here, and this place is going to go absolutely nuts. And when he hit it, I looked at Andrew, and Andrew was doing what, you know, I mean, he didn't even move. Uh, neither one of us did, and landed up in that scaffolding in left center field. I never liked losing in Shea Stadium. I never liked losing to the New York Mets, but I didn't mind losing that one. That was one that uh, that, that town, that team, that city 
needed yeah. way more than we did. Despite the fact that Piazza from his crouch would hear Ozzy Osbourne, your walk-up song, <laughs> that flippin' song is the worst. He, uh, he always told me, I, he, I'd walk up and he'd say, how you doing, Larry? You know, and I'd go, I'm doing pretty good, Michael. And he'd hear that song and he'd be like, I hate that flippin' song. <laughs> oh, uh, the stories are many. Uh, the career is singular. He's on the ballot in January. Three of your mates went in, your pitchers went in in the first ballot. We'll and my manager. Yeah, that's right. And uh, it'll be something to keep an eye on. This is, this is a fascinating book, Ball Player. Thank Shepard, you. it's great to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Me, I appreciate it.